So I'm just trying to get a reference edge on my ash here to put up against the table saw fence. I'm using the number seven. I'm not taking a super thin shaving off it, but just getting roughed out for now. Just need a square face to go up against the table saw fence, square and flat. Once I get a full shaving, I should do it. A lot of grain reversal on it, so a little bit of tear out, but we're starting to figure it out. Yeah, I only got one choice on this one. Take a look at the grain. I want my blade to be hitting. I want my grain going this way because I'm cutting this way. You can see the crack in here. Can you? There's a little bit of a crack in there, so if you take that as an example. You don't want your blade going in and catching that and pulling it up. You want it to be going with the grain. I don't know if that explains it well or not. That's it, just clean it up a little bit so I have something. I've got to cut some spots out of it just to see what I can get out of it. I'm still learning this. But I'm enjoying doing it. Green reversal there. And I guess these ones will be for my top, which will be thinner. And about two and three quarters there. Alrighty. So I just want to cut some of the ugly out of these boards. So we'll see what we can do here. Uh, a little bit more than two and a half inches. What does that one give me? A little bit more than two inches.
got all my bottom pieces milled down to about three inches. And I'm looking at my box and I figure I can get a side and a side. And on this one I can get two ends easy. So I can use this whole board if I want. But I don't think that's quite the size I want. I got a foot there. And I've got oh about seven inches on the inside there. So I'm thinking maybe six by ten would be nice on the inside. So I gotta cut all of these an inch over to account for the finger joints, the box joints. So that's what we're going to do. I guess 6 by 10 would give me uh, I'll need 7 by 11. Yeah, actually 6 by 9. I had it figured out before. Yeah, that would work. 6 by 9. That almost seems like a photograph size, doesn't it? Yeah, 6 by 9 I think I'm going to make it. So I've just got those cut to width and I've used a stop block so they're all those two are exactly the same and those two are exactly the same and I've got them just a wee little bit over what I want just by a touch an eighth of an inch or so and that will give me a little bit of wood to be proud of the box joint that I can sand down later so the important thing is the depth of the box joint that will regulate the length of the box. Alrighty, I guess we're ready to cut some box joints. So we're getting set up here. I've got one of my pieces and I'm just setting a marking gauge to the width of the piece. And I'm going to draw a line. gauge me and that will be the height and we'll start off low bring it up okay I'll try some test cuts So, two pieces of scrap and a test cut. Seems to be good. It's got to go a bit deeper though. Well, we're back at it again. Uh, not much time has passed in your time, but for me, this is a couple of days later. Now, I was going through my footage that I shot and saying that I was going to adjust the width on this thing. But if I look at my first cut, it looked like it was pretty decent for the fit. So I think what I'm going to do is flip this sacrificial piece over. And try it like that because I think it got loose running it through multiple times and that was the problem so 
we're just gonna continue with our testing here. And I know it might not be the most exciting thing in the world, watching somebody making all these test cuts. But very rarely does anything work out first time. I know I've watched a lot of videos and, oh, just do this, bang, 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 and put it on the table and they come out with the most beautiful cut. But this is all the stuff that gets edited out. And I kind of wanted to keep that in there. Because it's always good to be testing and fitting and making sure everything goes well before you get on with the, the, the job itself on your good wood. So we're going to, again with the scraps, try doing this one more time and see if we actually need to put a knife wall in there now that I've got this flipped over and just see what's what here. And I'll tell you what's what. That screw is sticking out a little bit. I'll be right back. I gotta fix that up a little bit. Alright, see what I mean? Did all that work and you didn't even see it. So we're gonna try to give this one more shot here. See how it turns out with just the backing plate and now that the height's set. calling that acceptable. A little bit of sanding on there, it'll take it out. My fingers are just slightly proud. So I guess we're ready for the real deal. So I want the long sides to have the finger on the top. sides to the outside. I would say that looks like a box.
and get the bottom put on it. I think that's going to be just fine. Alrighty. Now I got to figure out how to put the bottom into grooves. I got to make some slots for the bottom to fit into. I'm pretty happy with that. On to the next job. I just lightly clamped it together so you can see how it turned out. Not too bad. This one's not clamped, but once I get that little bit of hair taken out of there, be a nice tight box joint. Beautiful. 